You're in the Universal Media Network. touches on this common, ordinary, everyday jack-o'-lantern, and we're going to light up this uh, friendly fellow in a brand new way in just a moment. David, where are my cigarettes? Uh, they're inside the refrigerator. I couldn't find them in the refrigerator, David. I put them on the table five minutes ago, and now they're gone. Where are they? Oh, yeah, I know. They're inside, in back of the TV set, where all the parakeet feathers are. I've already looked there, David. They're over at Grandma's house. Now, you know Grandma doesn't smoke. Where are my cigarettes? They're in the pine tree. Look at that. I don't think they could get into the pine trees. Where are my cigarettes? They're in the toad cage. Inside your toad cage? My goodness, I don't think they are. Where are they? They're behind the doggy diner dog hands. Where are my cigarettes? Find them for me, please. They're in the frozen food section. I'm really getting tired of asking you this, David. Where are my cigarettes?
What the cigarettes? They're in, they're in the Toyota. I can't believe you at all anymore. You aren't telling me the truth. Where are my cigarettes? They're in the green slime in downtown Martinez. Green slime? You've got to be crazy. Where are my cigarettes? They're in another dimension. Drop them. David, you're making most of that up. Where are my cigarettes? They're in Flavor Country. David, I've been there and they're all out of my favorite brand. Now, if you don't tell me where my cigarettes are, I'm really going to get mad at you. I told you, I told you, they're inside the refrigerator. See? Right there. for your eyes at the optical department at long grain rice broccoli treats you may see this as an impossibility about a hundred years ago the cowboy and longhorn first traveled the chisholm trail 700 dusty miles from san antone to abilene for a dollar a day and a plate of beans and when a man wanted a good smoke he had to roll his own Today, things are a little different. Oh, 
Well, what's happening? I don't want to sit where the darn bee is going to come. <laughs> where is he now? Did he fall behind me? Oh, is he going to stay there or something? Oh, or is he... You don't have to watch him. You know when he is. Oh, well, hey, I don't want to wait. I have Cut his abdomen off. Uh, some, uh, some covers of man. And there's little my Uncle Charlie there. Just pull up at night with my hand down one of them and got it right. And that hurts. But and don't it hurt for about five minutes? It he left his stinger in there, and I had to pull it out. It out. Oh, <laughs> I went got me and my rose bushes. I hope he don't get you. Yeah, he's kind of trying, right? Well, well he's I sang a peach for you with that. Innovative products for enterprising. It's important to understand that nothing great, unless you're willing If you were watching our last show, you remember our spark machine, of course. And with us again today, I've brought along Mr. Wills. Come on up. Okay, I guess. And, uh... Okay, watch it. I understand that, uh, we're going to light up this jack-o'-lantern with how many volts? It's about 700 this time. I've oh. improved it. <laughs> got more capacitors and more PCB. Now, oh, don't touch okay. anything, are you ready? Yeah, I about did myself in with this the last time, so All I'm right. going to stand off a bit. Let me check and make sure that this plate is adjusted here. And I have a macadamia nut in here, too. In fact, oh, that, it's the same one. Good. The same nut. Are you ready? Ready over here. Okay. There, the nut is on fire right now in the pumpkin. And it's burning my electrode. The metal like is melting. Fireworks over the top. Little bits of black smoke and white vapor gas shooting all over the place. Do okay. you want me to make some big ones? Well, it's part of that uh, grape in there. Too. I see uh, our, Boy, isn't our, that nice? our lighting person, Boy. Enrico Gomez, standing over in the wings ready to don't turn touch out the light. That. So why don't we do that you as could a be special Halloween treat? We'll see how it looks in the dark. All right, here we go. I'm going to hit the nut again. The nut is now on fire in the pumpkin. Yeah, can I put this on? Yeah, go ahead. Put in the stupid old nose. Ooh, boy. You got me. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm really getting excited now. Oh, there's part of that grape again. Oh, it keeps wanting to make big ones. Oh, let me get the nut one more time. I've almost burnt the entire macadamia nut. Okay, we're about out of time, Mr. Wills. There's the segment. nut right out of the pumpkin. It's Drop completely it in charred, there. isn't it? Yep. Just like last time. Well, thank you very much for showing this. It's been a fascinating demonstration. And don't touch that, okay? Right. Thank we'll be you. right back. get a high-paying, high-ranking job, but you're loading the dice against yourself if you don't look and act the part. Women must maintain a competitive edge. Appearance and good grooming are essential factors in any employment situation. Your appearance shows the world how you feel about yourself. If you're sloppily dressed and carelessly coiffed, it can create a strongly negative impression. A truly well-groomed woman appears to be confident and efficient. Hairstyle, wardrobe, makeup, all contribute to good grooming, and all are worth your time and attention. When you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you succeed. That's what millions of women joining the workforce are finding out. Can you start Monday? I'd love to. Gee, it's nice to spend a quiet evening at home. Well, now it's time for... Oh, excuse me. Come in. Trick or treat. Oh, why, E.T., how nice of you to join me and be on the show this evening, and especially after your blockbuster movie so soon. So, tell me why you dropped by. Oh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Halloween safety. This oh, is that what I these think. posters are for? Yes. Oh, well, why don't we show them to our friends at home? 
Why don't you tell us a little bit about it, E.T.? You don't want to pick up fresh fruit because they could put nails or razor blades in them, and that could mm -hmm. be very painful. Or other painful objects, of course. What's this here? And, of course, you want to look for holes or tears in the wrappers because they could inject chemicals into it, like cyanide. Okay, let's get to this next one. And, of course, avoid eating homemade treats. What, what kind of homemade treats are you talking about? I'm not about, exactly eh? sure what that is, but no homemade treats. I guess that's like homemade bread and cookies and little drinks. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, yeah. You must avoid weird, strange-looking people, especially oh. people like that or funny ones like that and maybe people like that. No oh, okay. strange people. But, so we should probably go and tell our parents? Yes, for sure. Like or that, call the police. our neighborhood? Absolutely. Okay. How about this one? Oh, boy, this is the one if you don't want to get sick and you don't want to get any germs, Make sure that your partner is not sick if you're going to bob for apples. That's extremely important. We don't want to get sick on Halloween, do we? Okay. Really careful. That looks like our last poster. So what would you suggest uh, us to give out if we're, if we're giving things out? I guess we shouldn't give, out, give away homemade treats, even though it's nice. Well, maybe like pennies. Or things that little, you can't little eat. Little toys, well, maybe? Yes, little toys would okay. be fine. Okay, well, you didn't I put just anything happened to have something there. for your bag. It's an orange ping pong ball. That, that reminds me of the eclipse we had this right. year. Okay, well, thank you for coming by. Why, and, why thank you, Dick. Okay. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this. All right, but well, goodbye now. Enjoy your ping pong ball. Thank you. Well... Good night.
prepared to the ride, we're going to take you on. If you don't believe us, look at this. Distinctive paint stripes encompass the hood, run the length of the body, and add a final touch of elegance to the deck lid. Odense grain vinyl roof, center pillar, and color keyed padded body side molding. Luxury wheel covers and white sidewall steel belted radio ply tires are stacked. Predators by every. Watch out for thunderstorms. Up the black. Through the coil and then... Upstairs apartment. The extent of the damage could be seen as repair crews boarded up the building this morning. Fire broke out in a dry cleaners on San Pablo Avenue about midnight last night. It soon spread to two neighboring businesses, and that's when a musician working upstairs noticed that something was wrong. And I just heard some sounds out the back. I didn't even smell smoke, because it was a good thing I checked just what the noises were, because it was actually the sound, the heat making the wall in the back buckling and the glass popping and breaking. So I ran into our studio and I grabbed the master tapes for our new record we've been working on, and we started grabbing as much studio stuff as we could, because it's like my whole life is, is wrapped up in everything up there. Now here, you can see flame right here. This is my bedroom. They've knocked out the, uh... and look, right in here, this is where everyone in Negative Land used to go pee or they poo, right in here. John's room, and this is his cat box. He used to, um, he kept the cat box inside his closet here. No, no one would ever go into the closet. This room really didn't get too much damage at all. This is Chris's room, and, and his, all the fire was in the back of the building or, um, and the building sort of tilted in a way so that, so that it, uh, all the water, when they sprayed all the water in, it all ran back into my room. Fire officials say the blaze did between $250,000 and $350,000 damage to the building and to its contents. So what do you want? Oh, I think, oh, well, I, I usually watch the news and uh, sports, but the sitcoms are all a bunch of crap. And then the, uh, some comedy programs are good once in a while, but the sitcoms are just, uh, most of them are soap operas now, whether it's daytime or nighttime, soap operas, and just have them on the radio years ago, only thing is they weren't as filthy in those days as they are now. Nowadays you've got sex and violence, and the kids are learning all about that, not only, not only in movie houses, but they learn it on television, and they go out and commit crimes all the time. <laughs> Soap operas. Yeah. For the best. Why do you like soap operas? Because um, it's a continuing story and it sounds like, yeah. you know, sex and everything. <laughs> what, what do you think they could do to improve television? I don't know what they could do, really. Possibly um, control it a little bit more, but then you then you got to fight controls. Uh, what could they do to improve it? Improve TV? Uh, could you also make commercials? You're in the Universal Media Network. <laughs> And now, Crosley Bendix, cultural reviewer and director of stylistic premonitions for the Universal Media Network, with today's Arts Review. Good hello. When you compute the days and nights, count up all the days of life, add to that the starry nights, the sum is not a number. These brilliant but now cliched lyrics from a Swedish Mertz jingle, familiar to everyone on the world cable, stand for something profound, nevertheless. 
the mysterious role of numbers in our lives and identities. You know, a wise guitarist once said, if six was nine, and a little earlier, seven in seven is, and even earlier, 96 tears. Does anyone really count? Numbers are power. Quote, I am a man, a man with four fingers, a man with four fingers on his hand. But that doesn't count my thumb. Unquote, President Chester Wills. And he should know. But you know, sometimes we feel like a deep pool of digits, numbers leaking out one end, pouring in the other, or perhaps more accurately, we feel like a grain of sand in a silo full of sugar. How many books are sleeping tonight in our numerous public libraries? How many books on numbers alone? Does an amount have a meaning if it's detached from scale? Think about that one. How many pounds do you weigh before and after gravity reduction? Have you ever picked out a number that strikes your fancy and then looked for it? Try it. You'll find it everywhere. More often than coincidence allows. Road signs, headlines, serial numbers, advertisements, addresses, horse races, you'll see. And if you can't think of a good number, use mine. 17. <laughs> Remember this number? Four score and 20 games ago, our atomic number came up to the plate. We swung at a blinding digit and it burst in a billion bits. And this folk saying, no two snowflakes are alike. Not a very comforting fact when you're freezing and you haven't been able to forage for radioactive garbage in 17 days. Do you know how many minutes a large retaliatory computer will be allowed to use in determining whether or not a launched ICBM half a planet away has our number on it? Did you ever forget your old phone number? <laughs> Probably not as often as you forget other people's numbers. Is there any one way to sum up this number of numerological queries in one place? Let me answer that question with two questions. <laughs> is today's date a number that stretches into the future as far as it stretches into the past? And is there enough space to have time? <laughs> well, I see by my digital watch that I'm out of it. Thanks a million. You've been a wonderful audience. Bye, Cleveland. You've been listening to cultural reviewer and social critic, Crosley Bendix. What do you like about television? MTV. Why, why do you like MTV? Because it has fine guys on it, like Bon Jovi and, and Van Halen and all those cute guys. Are you, uh, uh, how you feel and how you dress, is that in any way influenced by television? Yes, because... Oh, you have to keep up with all the latest styles, I'm sure. You can't just walk around looking like a gump. You have to wear the latest styles that are on TV. Do you watch uh, MTV? What? No. MTV, the music television channel? Yeah, a lot. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, I don't really, I don't like boys playing drums. I'm thinking about girls playing drums. <laughs>
starring some of our most successful cars for 1980. Well, what you've seen so far is just the beginning of the Monarch story. This is Dick Goodbody, thanking Negative Land and your Northern California Lincoln Mercury dealers for making the 1976 Mercury Monarch 10th Anniversary Giveaway Celebration such an extraordinary and effective success. Production acknowledgement should be credited to Negative Land, who recommend the following for promotional consideration. Airmail California Tomatoes. For red letter quality that's right on time, make sure it's stamped Airmail. Pack of gold, light seedless grapes. Worth their weight in heavy syrup, but downright dirt cheap. Pack of gold from PCP. Premium high class dog food. 100% complete and balanced. High chunk, high flavor. It's a dog's life with premium high class. Trappy sugary Sam golden yams. A year round attraction packed in authentic Louisiana style syrup. Sugary Sam is a darn good yam. Universe Foods Stellar Biscuit Mix. Your kids will think they're made of space dust. Only you'll know they're stellar. Stellar, 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 stellar.
do you feel about TV? I think it's great. What, what's great about it? Just when you have nothing else to do, you can just watch TV. It kind of waste time. Coats, it relieves heartburn, upset stomach, even relieves diarrhea. time watching religious programs because um, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ myself so I don't really need to watch TV to preach the gospel to the blind those that can't see just physically but those that that don't see spiritually and prepare yourself right now to get completely into God's Word now We'll get right into this after this very, very important message. So listen very carefully. Now, uh, an old friend you've known before and who is back, he will be, ter <laughs> he will be returning to radio soon after a three-year absence. Some of you know him as Pastor Richard Thielen, but I think most of you know him. That's right. A, a round of thunder applause, please, for Pastor Dick. Thank you very much. Uh, so are we all having a good fellowship time this evening? Well, good. I'm having a pretty good time myself. I did have a little trouble over at the bar, though. Yeah, well, I asked the uh, barmaid for a cup of coffee, and... Uh, I asked for it without cream, and she said, I'm sorry, sir, you'll have to have it without milk. We don't have any cream. <laughs> and it's a safe bet they're selling more Killian's Red than freshly ground black, because uh, my first sip about sent me through the ceiling. <laughs> and uh, I called her back, and I said, pardon me, miss, this coffee tastes like mud. 
She said, yeah, well, it should, buddy. It was just ground this morning. <laughs> well, it's missions month at our house of worship. And for the protection of the congregation, I'm not going to give you the denomination, but uh, I will tell you it's located in San Ramon. And uh, because of that, we've aimed our missions drive toward Mexico, many needy families there. And we're also using this as a way to uh, teach our children Sunday school about the spirit of giving. So we uh, devised the um, Nichols for Needy program for the children's Sunday school. And the way it works, the um, children bring in all their spare nickels, all the nickels they can get. And at the end of the month, the child or boy or girl who brings in the most nickels will receive a scale model of the Dodge Royal Monaco Brougham, just like the one I drive. And uh, we expect it to do very well, and uh, each week we have uh, an official spokesperson who comes into the Sunday school and gives a little rundown on the flannel graph board on who's in the lead. And this spokesman is a friend of mine, and when I told him about our special youth ministry here tonight, he wanted to come along and meet all of you nice folks. So won't you please welcome Mr. Enrico Gomez. Enrico. Enrico. Oh, look at all the people. Enrico, you were asleep. Oh, forgive me, senor. I was taking a siesta. Enrico, a siesta at this hour, really. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, but I am so tired, senor pastor, from working at the bus station all day. The bus station? I thought that's where your Uncle Jose worked. Oh, not anymore, pastor. Well, what happened? Don't tell me he lost another job. Oh, no, pastor. This time he is really sick. Sick? What is he sick with? Oh, he was fixing a bus down at the terminal, and he cut his finger on the battery post. Got a terminal disease. <laughs> oh. So are we all wearing our smiles? Well, for those of you who haven't found your smiles yet, I have a little anecdote that never fails. <laughs> and this really happened. Uh, for those of you who listen to my J Brigade broadcast, you'll be familiar with the vocal group I conduct, the Youth Teen Action Singers. And, uh, in fact, I believe we heard it over the PA just a few minutes ago, their song, It's Contagious. And this little incident occurred a while back while we were working on a new musical, a contemporary Christian program dealing with the problems and pressures of today's youth. It was entitled, Sometimes I Feel Like a Blob. <laughs> and uh, this little incident uh, occurred about that time. And uh, we'd agreed to meet in the sanctuary that evening for a rehearsal. And as it turned out, uh, men's fellowship ran a little bit long that evening. And uh, I showed up a little bit late. By the time I got there, these, uh, well, these kids are kind of energetic. They were running around the sanctuary, throwing, uh, well, shouting, throwing hymnals and ducking behind pews. <laughs> and I called out, all right, order, order, order. And the boy calls out, hamburger, fries, and a Coca-Cola.
But I do want to remind you, the Youth Teen Action Singers do have a new album out. It's their 19th release on the Sacred Phonic label. It's entitled, How Do You Spell Joy? And uh, we're going to do a song together. We're going to kind of warm up tonight with um, a song from the album. And where are my visual aids? I need my visual aids. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to do them with, without. Let me get back there. Well, I don't know. But I'm glad I have them. Anyway, the name of this song, as you can see, is Stop. And uh, it's an old favorite, so if you know it, feel free to join in and sing along. And if you don't know it, you can uh, also participate. And all I need from you is uh, a couple of claps every time you hear the word stop. So let's try it once for practice, okay? Stop. Okay, well, maybe we... <laughs> Why don't we try it one more time and uh, let's get behind it this time. Okay, ready? And stop. Okay, very good. Let's go right to it. All right, and stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. He forgave my sins and he saved my soul. He cleansed my heart and he made me whole. Oh, stop. And let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Good evening. Topping night casts a possible link between murder and music. Music performed by a rock group right here in the Bay Area. Four members of a Midwestern family were murdered. The 16-year-old son is the prime suspect. Members of the experimental rock group Negative Land have been drawn into the case. And prosecutors won't even tell them for certain that their music, how their music, might be involved. Hal Eisner has our report. It was the kind of murder case that friends and neighbors said didn't make sense. They didn't understand how an A student from a good family could murder his brother, sister, and parents with an axe. He was not a homicidal maniac. He, he was did not show he was, any signs of wanting to hurt anyone. David Brom was accused in the multiple axe slayings, but now almost three months later, many are still wondering why. One explanation may involve a Bay Area music group called Negative Land. <laughs> Negative Land's music is highly critical of the mass media, nuclear war, and handguns. The group thinks their music is humorous, but they don't find it a bit funny that one of their songs poking fun of religion may have sparked a dispute among the Brahms, triggering the murders. They say federal authorities asked them to cancel a long-planned 17-city tour and eliminate live performances until the conclusion of the investigation. The probe apparently involved their song, Christianity is Stupid. It's hard to listen to the cut and not laugh. If you have any sense of humor at all or, or uh, whatever, it's, it's, it's hard not to see the humor in it and that it would result in anything as serious as this, I think is ridiculous. This isn't the first time controversial music has been linked to tragedy. Charles Manson said his murder spree was influenced by the Beatles' Helder Skelter. It's believed Night Stalker suspect Richard Ramirez was influenced by ACDC's Highway to Hell album. And Ozzy Osbourne's song Suicide Solution became the focal point of an actual suicide case involving a Southern California teenager. What you can say is that music is, is a bystander uh, involved to a certain degree, but most unlikely that it generated the mayhem. If it did, there'd be a lot more mayhem around. Meanwhile, the members of Negative Land are hoping for a speedy conclusion to the Brom case in Minnesota and eventually a return to their live performances and a career that after nine years had finally taken some positive turns. 
but a quick end to the bizarre murder case may be in doubt. A Minnesota judge has ruled that David Brom will face trial as a juvenile. The prosecutor wants Brom tried as an adult, and he's appealing. I'm Hal Eisner, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. It'll be several months before the court decides whether to try David Brom as a juvenile or an adult. The date for his murder trial can't be set until that decision is made. That means it's also not clear how long the band will be restricted from performing. How do you feel about television? It's going to make me famous one day. <laughs> well, uh, wh why do you think that? Huh? Because, why do you think television is going to make you famous? Because uh, the media is, is exploitive. It, it uh, takes an issue, it can blow it out of proportion, or it can take uh, uh, a serious issue and uh, make nothing out of it. you got to know how to exploit the media. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> There is absolutely no other possibility, god damn it.